Hello, and welcome to the May show of Hempfield Happenings. I'm your host, Paige Harrington. And I'm Jake Seesaw. This month, we took a look at how Henfield is keeping specific senior traditions alive. What new problem arose with student transportation in the past few years? And went back and spent some time with the middle schoolers' morning news system. All this and more on this month's episode of Henfield Happenings. Many of the parents of the 2021 seniors felt that they shouldn't miss out on any more annual senior traditions. So this year they took it upon themselves to run prom separate from the school. <laughs> Over the past year, many school-wide events have been canceled or postponed due to COVID. But this year's seniors did not let this pandemic get in their way of having a senior prom. Here, the Nook has become a non-traditional venue to hold this annual tradition. Mr. Hawley is the steering committee advisor here at Hemfield. On a normal year, the junior committee members, with his help, would take on the responsibilities of the prom. And then the junior's primary role is to execute that theme, DJ, experience, things like that, so that the seniors don't have the stress or the added, I guess, pressure of working their own prom. Bella Rankin is one senior who will be attending this year's prom, and her mother, Jody Rankin, is helping in planning and creating this one-of-a-kind night for her daughter and her classmates. Through lots of organizational efforts, the prom is going to be a really great experience for the graduating class. They will all have already graduated, um, so it's really just a huge celebration. Um, so that's why it's called MORP and not prom. It's a little different, um, but it's going to be a great dance party. We have a fabulous DJ, DJ Image, who is a Hempfield graduate. Um, we're going to have a like a runway, a walking environment, red carpet for some photo opportunities, um, some games, some fun games, some things things to win, um, and just really just a really fabulous dance party. I think with the location and the fact that most seniors and underclassmen and their dates are looking for a school event to be sanctioned that this prom is going to have a greater turnout than previous years. Um, it's held at the Nook. I know the parents are doing a lot of fun things like photo booths and you're gonna have food there and they're really working hard on the music as well. And I think overall, it's just gonna be a great experience. Since the prom is not through the school this year, the parents had to get creative with their fundraising. So as of right now, it's all through ticket sales, but ticket sales are a little slow. Um, so there will be a fun drive within communities where we will ask seniors to actually take flyers around looking for donations. We have an active website, hemfieldseniors.com, where we are looking for donations. Um, parents have an opportunity to purchase plants, um, and then that money will be donated back to the, this cause. Depending on how this year's prom runs, there might be a future for the Nook being the new home for the Hemfield High School prom. I think that if we have a great turnout and... Um, and it just runs smoothly that there's a definite possibility for this to be future proms because I think that this is really going to be a hit because I know our parents are working hard to put on the best event possible. For Hemfield Happenings, I'm Elizabeth Williams. 
How student transportation is run may not be the first question that comes to mind when people think of Hempfield, but that doesn't negate this importance of this tool. Unfortunately, there's been a recent shortage of bus drivers across the entire U.S., and Hempfield has not been exempt from this troubling trend. School bus drivers are in high demand right now. Between long-standing shortages and COVID-19, Hempfield School District, along with districts all over the nation, are in need of bus drivers to take students to and from school. Derek Frank, the Hempfield Transportation Director, has some worry about the tough situations that have arisen due to the shortage. So the bus driver shortage is a national issue. Uh, this year has, it has been a struggle for a number of years, this year in particular, it has become a major issue. It's a national issue, it's a local issue, and it's a Hempfield issue. Hempfield contracts our services 100%. So Hempfield has no direct drivers or direct employees. So right now we're contracted with Student Transportation of America. Due to the pandemic and the driver shortages, we have also started to use Faithful Transport to help with some of our minivan needs. If I could wake up in a dream world tomorrow, STA would have 20 more drivers. Being a bus driver often comes with a unique set of challenges. It's a tough job. You're responsible for a big vehicle and a lot of lives. Uh, it's a job that has odd hours. It's kind of like a split shift. You have early dismissals. You have delays with weather. So it takes a unique person that only needs a few hours but is also willing to take that big responsibility of driving the big vehicle and, and the lives. It's tough to have a second job with driving a bus unless it's an evening job or a weekend job because of how flexible you have to be with the hours. It is an opportunity. It's an opportunity uh, to make a little extra money. If you aren't afraid of driving big vehicles, please consider the job opportunity. You can find their job postings on all over the place. Donna Renninger really enjoys her job as a driver for Hempfield students. Yeah, it's great. I mean, the kid, you know, some of these kids need help. You know, they need somebody to talk to them, you know, to listen to them and, you know, to be there for them. I mean, I find my job rewarding. You know, if we didn't have the bus drivers, these kids would be home getting depressed and God knows what they'd be getting into. Despite difficult situations caused by the nationwide bus driver shortage, school districts have been able to keep providing transportation for their students, and bus drivers are loving their jobs more than ever. For Hemfield Happenings, I'm Ryan French. In order for student-led news like this episode of Hemfield Happenings to run, they need to reach younger students in the district. Vince Wazowski took a trip down memory lane to see how the middle schools involve their students in the school announcements. March 16th, Cycle Day 5. The Hempfield Communications Program at the middle schools include WLMS and WCMS. WLMS and WCMS are the programs covering middle school news. Each school has the opportunity to go live each morning and read the day's news to the school body. Typically, each program has a morning time slot to go live and a prep flex at the end of the day. Both schools have similar and different ways COVID has impacted them. You can't have the same face expressions that you did before. Wearing your mask um, and trying to maintain a distance, it's a little bit harder in this room because we have so many people. Yeah, we could have them off, but then we got quarantined twice, this class did. So. While both schools face having to wear masks, WLMS has to overcome another obstacle. We just have to like spread out because like everyone was like squished like in here because it's a small room. So. But together, both schools have done a terrific job following through with guidelines. Um, they're very good about it. Uh, they, I've not, I've rarely had to tell any of them to ever keep their masks on or pull the mask up. Um, Any time it is below the nose, it's like an accident, like they were talking, and they most of the time take care of it themselves. But to the students, they've gained something even more valuable. Of course, you know, the group of people that um, are in this group are pretty fantastic people and no matter what like regulations like I would be happy to work with them like any day. I feel like that we've actually grown closer because like we're all going through the same thing in some sense. It's a great group of people too. So. Even though social distancing, masks, and a lack of smiles, these amazing group of students were able to take something so important and create a show so <laughs> special to them. From Happenings. I'm Vince Wazowski.
Throughout the coronavirus pandemic, many places of worship have had to find new and creative ways to work around the regulations. Grandview Church Lancaster recently added a new live streaming setup to reach their congregation from home. One way 76.5% of Americans use their voice is in their religious identity, and religious leadership helps unite those individual voices into one community voice. But also the voice of the con congregation is by expressing what Judaism has to say about different, you know, important topics for the community. So whether it be by, you know, through an interview with a newspaper, eh, or it could be, you know, about, I also go to, to, to schools when I'm, I'm invited eh, to speak about Judaism and, and, you know, teach about what uh, Judaism is and how, how we practice it. You know, it could be about giving our opinions on, on, on hot uh, topics for today. So that's another, another, I believe, important way of sharing or finding our, our place and our voice in the community because, you know, Ju Judaism and the Jewish tradition has a lot to say, like, like any other religious traditions, I guess. With over 140,000 religious organizations in the United States, some focus on environmental issues. As in 12, as part of my doctoral program, I uh, instituted what was called Senior Life Institute, which was twice a year we have a team of people who pick a particular topic that is of interest to the whole community, and we've had speakers, and it's usually two or three speakers uh, on a topic. We did the Underground Railroad, we looked at Islam, we, did, we looked at Buddhism, we've, oh, we have a spring session and a fall session. And this fall, we're doing what's called Birds on the Brink. We're doing it virtually, is to talk about where, where's all the birds in Lancaster have gone. With a 29% decline in bird population since 1970, the church's congregation is coming together to help out. Speakers coming in, and it is in co cooperation with what our youth are doing to create a um, creation center and care of care of the creation and natural environment. So the youth are working on specific projects where they can help to create like a bird sanctuary here on our grounds. Some national religious organizations use their voice to speak out on issues such as inequality. We did the most important things that the denomination felt like we needed to do. And one of those was to really make a statement for the Presbyterian Church USA that we needed to act now to support um, awareness across our congregations for uh, social injustice, racial injustice, uh, um, structural poverty, and a variety of ways to make people aware in our churches of what regular people are struggling with and dealing with. As you can see, being a religious leader does not mean you only speak out on religious issues, but also environmental and social issues. For Hemfield Happenings, I'm Ben Weaver. Once high school athletes reach their junior year, they have to start completing college recruitment. College recruitment is a long process that involves emailing coaches and visiting colleges, and there are a lot of aspects that need to be considered. Many junior athletes are navigating their way through the complex college sport recruitment process. There are many components involved that are not often thought of. Although athletes are being recruited for a sport, when picking a college, the sports program should not be the determining factor. It's amazing to go somewhere for a sport, but realizing that the most important thing out of it is getting the education and going somewhere that you're going to fit in and feel welcomed and feel like you're at home. I started making, like looking at colleges originally because of academics, and then from that list, I started looking at like volleyball and like the sports side of things, but I, the basis was for academics and location. Obviously you go to college to get a job. I'm not gonna be playing field hockey my whole entire life or lacrosse my whole entire life. If you don't like the school, you don't wanna go to that school and then just only have that sport, that team there. Personally, if there's a school that you don't wanna go to but you like the sports team, it's not even worth your time. And like even if you like the coach, 
coaches switch out so much that you don't want to commit off of a coach because that's such a variable that can change. Athletes may think that they can get into a college solely on their athletic skills. However, academics are just as important, if not more. And the biggest piece of advice I would give to any young uh, prospective college kid is that have good grades. Don't forget, right, you're going to be a student athlete and the student comes first, athlete comes second. When talking to college coaches, it is crucial to develop a personal connection to them. Introduce yourself. Talk about your hopes and your dreams and definitely talk about what program you're interested in, what you want to be, how you want to be as a student athlete. With my coach that I committed with, we did Zooms and I really got to know her personally and I, she got to know me personally and really just having like conversations, not just about the sport you're committing with and not just like about you, like get to know them and make it fun because the process should be fun and you should enjoy where you're going and who your coach and team is. Even though college recruitment is about committing for sports, the college campus, academics, and personal connections are just as relevant to the process. For Hemfield Happenings, I'm Kirsten Gilland. Elementary school specials have been affected by COVID. Teachers have had to find creative ways to adjust to these changes. <laughs> Elementary school students take their core subjects, but also get to enjoy specials on a cycle basis. Like many things in our lives right now, COVID has had an effect on these classes. Along with following the normal COVID procedures of wearing masks, social distancing, and hand sanitizing, the teachers had to implement other rules to keep the students safe. Mrs. Heverling had to make adjustments to her normal library class. We are researching animals. A lot of the concepts of looking for a book has changed so drastically. We have to worry about quarantining the books when they are returned. When we line up, we use Superman arms or airplane arms. Whenever we're walking through the library, we try very hard to stay socially distant. The plexiglass is here, so that way I'm able to scan books through the plexiglass, so that way it cuts down on the amount of close contact that I would have with students. Mr. Plymeyer had to change how he does things in his art class because of the pandemic. Yeah. 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 Students can't interact as much as we typically do with gallery walks and critiques. Um, we're using the iPads a lot, so we're more focused on the technology piece and also materials. We were unable to order any materials this year. Mr. Grimm saw making changes necessary to his gym class. When the kids come in, we get the hand sanitizer, and after that, I have created home spots that are about seven feet apart. That way the kids have the same spot. Any equipment we use goes into a sanitized station, essentially, and then it gets sanitized after, and then um, it's ready for the next class. Mrs. Fritz showed her creativity with having to make adjustments to her normal music class. We are unable to share instruments this year, but that's opened up a lot of opportunities for us to try new things like the virtual xylophones or the individual music bags. The biggest thing that's changed is the concerts. Um, we are not able to invite and open up our school and welcome in the parents to share our musical learning. So we have to do it in a new way. We secured those permissions and then we're able to make recordings and videos of students making music uh, in the music classroom. We're compiling a video and we're going to be able to share that with families. So we're still doing our best to make music just in a new way. The pandemic has also brought about online students in which the teachers have done their best to accommodate. The addition of the online and in-house students has been an interesting thing to also make sure that the technology will work for the students. I try to provide them with as much of the materials as possible but sometimes I can't provide them with everything and that's just been a huge challenge. And then she also films the virtual kids because we have virtual kids with all the classes. The students show to have similar feelings about the changes and their effect on the classes. I'm still enjoying the classes, it's really fun. A lot of it is beneficial because we get to do other things that I probably wouldn't have gotten to do. They're beneficial because they're helping our safety, that way we don't get COVID. There are similar goals in this difficult time of teaching. 
For the students to come to school and have a sense of normalcy, have a sense of routine, to get back into the swing of things would be a very big um, thing for all students to be working towards. Um, making sure that the learning experience is as equitable as possible for all the students. So my goal is to get them active, but also keeping them safe in the process. The biggest goal is just to get kids still playing music, still enjoying music, still participating in music, moving in new ways, um, playing instrument in new ways. We just want them to still experience and enjoy music class. These specials have been affected by COVID, but the teachers have worked hard to make their classes safe and enjoyable for the students. For Hempfield Happenings, I'm Morgan Oilfong. One Hemfield athlete recently went further than anyone else in our school district had before them in their respective sport. Jake and I held a question and answer session with Derek Keller, who was Hemfield's first ever student to attend States for Bowling. I was happy that I made it to States in general, so I didn't really care where I placed. Uh, I've been bowling for six years now, I believe, something like that. Um, it definitely feels pretty good, but... Um, I was pretty disappointed with myself like earlier in the season and I sort of like filled in that gap that I was looking for. This past year I was the like happiest for me just because I was able to improve so much and uh, yeah I'm really happy that I made it to States. The goal is to make it to States every year. Uh, so after each game they add the it added on to your total so um, I averaged 233 which a lot of people would say that's pretty good, and I would say that's pretty good too, but um, I averaged 233 for six games, I believe it was, and um, so that it was like a 1156, I think, was the total after six games, so each game they just add up the scores, and then um, after that it was top eight, move on, and for, for the totals of the six game scores. And then after that, then they did sort of like a stepladder finals where, um, where it was like head to head. And I won my first match and then I lost my second. And then that was, so basically they have uh, the top 24 bowlers bowl in uh, regionals. Uh, for each section so uh, I actually was 25th and a kid became ineligible so I actually got moved in so I got pretty lucky with that um, unfortunate for him but um, I yeah I got lucky with that and then uh, it was top eight I believe that they moved on to states so there was a total of 32 bowlers there and 16 were from Eastern PA and 16 were from uh, West, like the West PA. Deciding who would place fifth or sixth, and I won that match, so I placed fifth. Another student who achieved great awards this year is Henfield senior Lily Heilsworn, who recently won the Grand Champion Award for Nor the North Museum Science Fair, a prestigious award for her innovative project. The sun's energy can be harnessed to provide an immense assortment. Each year, the North Museum holds a science fair for students all across the county to showcase their projects. At this year's fair, Hempfield senior Lily Heilshorn won the Grand Champion Prize. Lily's award-winning project took a unique look on renewable solar energy. My project was on um, ground composition and how it affects the efficiency of solar pavers, which are specially designed solar panels that are installed in the ground to kind of maximize surface area and sun exposure. So I looked into different types of ground like cement, concrete, grass and soil, and how their composition changed the efficiency as they heated up from about 35 degrees to 72 degrees. I wanted to do something with transparent solar windows, but because of COVID, I wasn't able to kind of secure a donation from anyone, but they pointed me towards Platio Solar Paver Company and that's where I got my idea from. The paperwork starts in September, but then it wasn't until beginning of January that I was able to get this donation from the Platio company. And then I did all my experimentation and then put it together at the beginning of March for the judging, and then they sent results out at the end of March.
Mr. Kuhn helps students with the process of entering their projects into the fair and is very proud of Lily's accomplishment. Really with these students that do these, these projects, it, it's really the student uh, and, and how they're, you know, they're reaching out and getting help from wherever they need it, but, but they, they take it on. I mean, for me, I, I'm more of an advisory role, uh, making sure paperwork's done and, and, and everything and make sure they're meeting their deadlines and stuff, but they really do so much on their own. So it's, it's just really important for people to know that you know, th th this is Lily's work and she did a great job. We've had many students uh, do well at the science fair. I mean, to be the, to be the grand champion means you, you've basically been deemed to have the best project in the entire county. So it, it's pretty significant. Uh, not only is it significant that you, you, know, you have the top project in the county, but you also get to attend ICEF, which is an international fair that, that you know, have people from all over the world participating in. You would think virtual would be easier, but really it was, as far as handling paperwork and everything else, it's actually more difficult, more cumbersome. Uh, just trying to get everything lined up. Uh, the the uh, students kind of had to, you know, maybe improvise by including some videos. Uh, they wouldn't have display boards, things like that. Everything was digital. So you really had to make sure that you put in the information that clearly indicated the judges, you, you know, about your project and what you knew. And then from there, they were interviewed via Zoom. Uh, normally, you know, they just talk to the judges in person during, during the fair. So uh, it was a little different this year. Lily's Grand Champion Award is not to be taken lightly and is a testament to the months she dedicated to creating a project for this year's North Museum Science Fair. For Hempfield Happenings, I'm Ryan French. The data collected shows that when combined with the Platio Solar... Our society is built on human connections and interactions with nature, one of these being man's best friend, the dog. On April 10th, Vince Wazowski explored Hug Your Dog Day and the impact dogs have had on us humans. Every year, states from across the U.S. celebrate National Hug Your Dogs Day on April 10th. Over 44 million dogs find refuge in houses across the U.S. But what makes these dogs so unique? They add so much fun and actually love to our family. It's really hard to come in this door, come up the steps without wagging tails, waiting to greet you. Much like Diane, Adeline Miller also finds comfort in having dogs at her house whether it be after a long day at school or a hard day's work at practice. They are there for me when I'm stressed and I can call them at the end of the day. But even sometimes, these dogs can get in the way of things. When you want to go away, it is a little bit of extra work to um, find someone to watch the dogs. It can be expensive for vet bills, um, but they're definitely worth it. They add so much uh, love to our family. But even still, dogs know how to reconnect with their owners. They are there for me and I can cuddle them at the end of the day when they're less crazy. These four-legged creatures will continue impacting generations moving forward. From Hempfield Happenings, I'm Vince Wazowski. We love our dogs. Oh, Harper. Thanks for watching. We hope you liked this month's episode of Hempfield Happenings and tune back in next month.